Hi ladies, a big thank you for joining me on this pregnancy journey. Hoping you're all feeling wonderful. And speaking of joining me, there's someone who has been there every step of the way and that is the lovely T from Body Smart. T, you're an accredited exercise physiologist. Tell us, what does that actually mean? Yeah, well, so as an accredited exercise physiologist, we're trained in how to prescribe exercise for different populations. So that could be pregnancy, it could be different types of injuries, um, different sort of metabolic conditions here as well. But our primary mode of um, therapy is movement-based therapy. So alongside Queensland Country Health, we've designed three videos for each trimester, first, second, and third. Um, and the great news is they can all be done at home. All you need is an exercise mat, a water bottle, and a sweat towel. Yeah. Talk us a little bit through the difference between the first and the second trimester. Yeah, so um, certainly with, within your first trimester, there's a lot of changes happening. And um, a lot of that, will, a lot of your exercise around will be based around how you're feeling. So I'm sure you can share a few stories about how you're feeling and um, the lethargy and sickness as well um, once we go through here. So first trimester, the most important thing is to be comfortable um, and two is to make sure that we're building on top of the muscles that help to support your spine as well as your pelvis as well because these are the two key areas that are going to change um, as your growing bump um, continues to develop. Um, and then moving into tr second tr trimester here, it's much the same but really again getting more specific around uh, making sure that pelvis stays nice and stable throughout movements. We're still working on a lot of glute strength, glute strength sorry, um, and then also integrating a little bit more through the obliques here with, in, in reference to your core strength. Um, and then moving into this third trimester now, we're sort of taking a bit of a step back in terms of intensity and really honing in on a bit more of that intrinsic control. So lots of pelvic floor activation and making sure that um, you're nice and stable through, through the, the really deep muscles of your core, core as well. Um, and then of course, lots of glutes, lots of legs, um, and then touching base with lots of postural exercises as well. Yeah, I think if I reflect on, you know, the first, second and third trimester, you obviously, it's incredible to think that over nine months, you can have so many different feelings in yeah. terms of, and you can look so different. So for me, and, and this is by no means everyone's journey, because everyone is very different. You hear yeah. people that are sick for the entire time. I I find that I get a lot of morning sickness early on. The last thing I want to do is exercise, yeah. <laughs> um, but the best thing for me is to exercise. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really good to, I think, have someone there guiding you and to keep you accountable because if, if it's left up to me, I always say, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. If I am accountable, I have to do it or I do it with somebody else, I always feel so great afterwards. So the benefit always outweighs the way that I normally feel beforehand. Yeah then you know you're obviously not showing or, or there's not too much of a baby bump there in that first trimester so you're capable of doing a lot of exercises that you you know you're used to doing depending yeah. on what your exercise history has been if you move into the second trimester i find that i get a a really great sense of um feeling about myself i feel good I, i'm getting a little bit bigger but i have that good rush of hormones yeah and then third trimester, you know, second and third trimester, that sickness has gone. Yeah. The third trimester is starting to obviously really show and there's a lot of weight at the front of your yeah, body. Definitely. Come the end of the day, you know, your legs are starting to ache a little bit. You know, you are carrying a lot of weight around, particularly in hotter months as well. Mm -hmm. It can always feel a little bit more uncomfortable. So I think um, probably what I noticed with that third trimester video that we did was it was very much like the other two but more so in the third trimester very much at your pace yes. and you can look at the videos and the exercises and think oh you know that's not a, a real workout but I think just because you're not sweating it doesn't mean that you're not focusing on yep. those tiny little muscles that are so important like your pelvic floor and that's the importance of that third trimester yep. why is pelvic floor so important um, during pregnancy and particularly in that third trimester absolutely so your pelvic floor is like the foundation of your your core stability there so it plays a huge role in in making sure that you um, reduce your risk of um, leakage or in incontinence post delivery um, and 
also you, you have a huge amount of these relaxing hormones that um, are facilitated within your, towards the end of your second and third trimester to aid in the delivery process of, ha um, of your baby. And so you're getting a lot of relaxation mm. happening within those muscles. Um, so what the aim of pelvic floor strengthening exercises is to make sure that you're conscious of drawing those muscles in to prevent that leakage um, or any injury occurring to those pelvic muscles. Um, but also it, it significantly places you ahead of the game in terms of your recovery post baby as well. Yeah, which is yeah. so important because I mean, when you, well, I know when I was first pregnant with Barney, that first pregnancy, you hear the importance of it, but and then until you go through that pregnancy, until you go after, uh, you know, after the birth and, and then you actually realize the real importance yeah. behind these things. So even to people that aren't pregnant, how important, particularly to females, is it to focus on doing pelvic floor? You know, as we went through those sessions, you explained that they're, they're little exercises that can be done when you stop at a set of traffic lights yeah. or at home on the couch. Is that something that people should just, all women should be doing even before, you know, mm -hmm. thinking children? If you have any predisposed factors that potentially could put you at risk of having any injury to your pelvic floor, certainly there's no harm in doing them. But generally, um, a healthy individual will have enough integrity and enough strength within your pelvic floor to naturally contract. So they, your pelvic floor does a lot of work without you even thinking about it contracting it. Mm. The process of consciously contracting is just to keep your body aware of where those muscles are and then building that sort of mind-body contraction. Mm. Um, so it's probably not a fundamental task to be doing all of the time, um, but certainly if you do have a predisposed a contraindication as to whether or not you could have some kind of pelvic floor injury post baby or you might have some kind of dysfunction, um, for various different reasons. Certainly they are great exercises to incorporate day to day, whenever you can, um, yeah. But it's not something that you, you have to do every single day. Yeah. So as we mentioned earlier, some of the beauty of the, the exercise programs that we've done has been that you've been able to do them at home. Yeah. Um, and you obviously talk me through those exercises and give me great cues, which are really important to make sure you have yeah. those little muscles switched on so you don't, have an injury or you know um, put yourself in any danger is there any exercises particularly during pregnancy or any um, I suppose anything that you need to really steer away from yeah so certainly um you, you tend to be encouraged to start to progressively slow down your specific core exercises. So when I say core exercises, I mean your very superficial muscle group here, so your six pack abs. Um, that muscle group there, you can, um, and you might've heard of this, so any pregnant ladies always get tested for this after you, you've delivered your baby, um, your abdominal separation. So generally the reason why we start to take a step back in terms of doing big core exercises like your crunches or like mountain climbers, for example, is because we don't want to facilitate more stretching through that muscle. And especially because we've mentioned those, those hormones that go through your body to relax those muscles, the more relaxed they are, that means there's no tension through them. So that if you're stretching them and they can't come back together, you're, you're sort of putting yourself at risk of increasing that stretching that happens as your baby bump grows. Mm. So that's the reason why you tend to be discouraged to do specific core exercises once you do find out that you're pregnant. So that's generally one thing you will be told um, as soon as you find out that you're pregnant, that you wanna to start to slowly take your steps back and be conscious of not completing those specific core stretch um, exercises there. Um, in saying that though, your obliques, so the muscles that come to the side here are vital in providing stability for your hips. So those are, those are muscles that you can certainly hone in on it during your first and second trimester before you get a lot of size through your stomach. Um, but on top of that, you certainly don't wanna be encouraging any breath holding. So things like where you'd be required to lift really heavy weights and hold your breath for long periods of time, those kind of things are discouraged as well. Um, you don't want to be laying on your tummy either, once, once, yeah, especially once you're starting to get a bit of shape as well. Um, and then laying on your back as well, as it, that's generally okay, but particularly after about 16 weeks, you want to sort of supply a little bit of um, 
comfort or a bit of protection for your upper parts of your back here. So generally you'll always recommend laying on a pillow or propping your upper body up slightly just to encourage that blood flow as well. But those are probably the key the key components in terms of what you want to stay away from. It's funny you mentioned yeah. pillows because third trimester, I'm currently 34 yeah. weeks <laughs> and at bed, in bed at night, I'm got about a barricade of pillows all yeah. around me just to make sleeping so comfortable Absolutely. because it sneaks up on you and then all of a sudden you know you are told that you should be sleeping on your side yeah. and and this weight that is at the front of you can really start to take its toll on your body I think probably um, the biggest thing too that I've learned through all of the pregnancies is um, that every pregnancy is very different. Yeah. Um, and it's obviously because your body knows what it's doing second yeah. and third time yeah. around. The first time it's just, you know, a big shock. It's exciting and it's always exciting, but um, it's amazing um, what the female body can do. Absolutely. And, an, you know, when you were talking about things like abdominal separation and pelvic floor and all these things that we speak so much about that you hear so much about once you've gone through the process, yeah. but you actually, you know, it sounds like a different language when you're entering into motherhood for the first time. Yeah. So all of that is actually really important. And I think um, for everyone at home, I would say that you might have a friend that suffered from abdominal separation or really bad back pain or you know significant pelvic floor damage you might you might have been a lucky one that didn't but you know it's it's easy to sometimes compare your journey with somebody else's yeah. but we are all so very different and i think particularly with exercise it's more important than ever to listen to your body during pregnancy Absolutely. and what you're capable of yeah. doing um and the biggest thing I would say that pain or, or things that cause discomfort when you're pregnant are a big no-no just to stop yeah, and do. Absolutely. It's definitely not a time to, you know, make muscle gain or, yeah. or be the fittest or strongest that you can ever be. You have to really listen to your body and, yeah. um, and just, I think, adopt a bit of a, a learning process through it all. Absolutely. I'm sure. What would you say would be the biggest learning curve that has occurred between your first and your third? I think just, um, I think that first pregnancy, I had a, a really different level of fitness entering into that first preg pregnancy because I had, had played sport at, you know, a high level. So I was physically very strong and fit. So, um, and then the second pregnancy, not as much. And now this third pregnancy, because I've had, you know, the, this second pregnancy and third pregnancy have only been about 16 months apart I feel like my body never really got back into that level of fitness that I was used to so um, you know I think that for me has been a big learning curve and knowing that life gets busier as you've got more little ones running around yeah. and I think just listening to your body more so than ever before so exercise has been a huge part for my mental health yeah. and for my physical well-being during pregnancy yeah. but I think it's also been um, the biggest learning lesson in this third, third pregnancy has been when I've been tired just to understand yeah. that enough is enough yeah. so Take breaks. yes yeah. so speaking of enough is enough thank you so much to everyone that's been a part of this journey a huge thank you to Queensland Country Health Fund for delivering and helping us deliver all this wonderful content to you T from Body Smart with all your expertise we wish you all the very best for the rest of your pregnancy journey